Yeah, I had another story, <coughs> a quick one. Um, I was in the streets, you know, back home, small and that, okay, so. And, um, you know, when you go back home, yeah, Africa, when you go back home, yeah. the animals there that. are very, you know, I like saying that, very majestic back home, you know. But when you go home, you know, the animals are very, very, very cheeky. Very cheeky. You will see in the <laughs> videos, see these animals back home, like, they run away with, like, watermelons and that. Yeah. So imagine, yeah, I, I bought a fat watermelon, I got wrapped by, like, three baboons. <laughs> <laughs> the baboons are thinning, in there, some type of monkey in it. Mm. And then, basically, after one grabbed that on my hand and ran with it, his boy, like, well, booted me in my back in it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and his boy, <laughs> and then I fell on my face in it. I started to cut right here. From he needs a TV show. Fat cut. <laughs> but yeah, man. Yeah, yeah, that's definitely true. You, yeah. you, need, you need a TV show, mate. Right. Baboons and goats and all sorts. <laughs> yeah, uh, the, the animal whisperer. Interesting. <coughs> what was that? Yeah, Doctor Doolittle. That's yeah. <laughs> Doctor Doolittle. Some money version. All right. All right. All right. That's a, that's an interesting way to start off. So yeah, we'll go I into feel the. I like uh, we'd even say whether nah, it's true or false. Hundred percent. It's true. What do you mean, man? It's true. Are we, both are we discussing this? Nah, I don't believe it. You know, you know I don't that believe you got kicked in the back by a monkey. <laughs> huh? I don't believe you got kicked. Okay, okay wait. Let me let me let me give you more detail. Let me give you more detail. What do you mean? Is it is it true or not? It's true. What you got? Yeah. Okay. Bro, you're what? the only guy that got kicked in the back right, by a monkey. So go. explain this. The the monkey mm. was running at like a fast pace. You know how fast they're running. Yeah. And and you watch this happen. <laughs> no, it was behind me. Okay. One of the ones wrapped out of my hands was three of them in it. Yeah. The other one's back in his boy carrying. Getting bullied by monkeys. <laughs> <laughs> and then the third one did like the finishing blow, so I wouldn't chase them. <laughs> so, so he kicked me and I fell down in the gym. Yeah, no, shit. Before you turn around, how old are you? Eight. Eight or nine. Do you nine? know how powerful monkeys are, bro? Uh, I mean, don't don't underestimate. Me heavy. <laughs> 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 you think you can't defeat me? <laughs> no, it's yeah, that is mad, fam. Yeah, man. God damn, mad. Right. Are you planning to go there back anytime soon? Nah, get get your revenge. Get, get your revenge, man. <laughs> Yeah, come with your boys as well. Poach, no chance. <laughs> well, those monkeys are old now. Why? <laughs> <laughs> no, I saw, I saw a picture. Chance this time. I saw a picture of a, of a monkey on social media. It's what monkeys do like without no fur. Chiseled, bro. Yeah, I don't I want saw, no smoke. Those are chimpanzees, man. Haven't you, haven't you seen uh, David Attenborough's show, Dynasties? Oh yeah. The I watched. I watched, I, watched, I, watched the I watched the one with the Yo, fish with a blue, 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 blue something in it. That's the blue fan, yeah. So you got him on the ropes, son. <laughs> so yeah, I think that's the general use of storytelling within your daily lives is making sure that you're able to come and say, uh, and like what Yasin said about, for example, in therapy or whatever, yeah, yeah. in job interviews, when you're making connections with people. Like for me, a, a few years ago, I dismissed the idea of small talk totally. I was like, there's no point in small talk. Like it just, it's it's kind of useless. Mm. You just get to the point and then get on with it. Yeah. But nowadays, I'm thinking like you're getting to know the person a bit more and relate to them a bit more, and it makes the conversation a bit more memorable when you do. Have that little bit of small talk. Hmm. There's there are situations there are situations where it's very clear that, that person just wants one thing, but generally I don't think that's the case. So I think it's good to have that small talk and that uh, ability to have conversations. So yeah, that's my um, that's my take on it. Oh, not just small talk. Uh, in terms of storytelling in yeah. general, like uh, that's a, a level of sm- a storytelling in itself, isn't it? So like, how are you? What you been up to lately? And then like, I think. There's this idea that you should just dismiss that these days and just get on to the, straight to the point. But mm. I don't think those conversations are, me- are memorable. And when you're networking, trying to build your network, yeah, uh, yeah. you need to have those those yeah. memorable moments. Yeah, and that's what I'm trying to say, essentially. Yes, uh huh. <laughs> so no, I feel like um, with that point, mm. that when you do basically tell someone like a story, especially like something that I got from the book, is like people usually like you know those like um like vulnerable type stories yeah where, mm-hmm. where there are like failures and whatnot like obviously if like there's a way that the way i see it personally is like mm-hmm. let's say i'm networking with someone yeah then there's like small talk but once that that's done there's like there's nothing to it there's like for me there's no like connection that's been built mm. whereas if like it doesn't have to be like a straight vulnerable story, but like an actual, like you know, like something like deep something in to it. Relate to you. Something, yeah, something to relate to. Something that you can both uh, like get, and you get me. Like that's like for example, like a lot of colleagues in at work, they mostly like bond off of 
the fact that they both don't like their managers yeah. and like different stories and whatnot. Or like mm. st students that um, bond together like over or uh, like how tough the student life is, mm. etc. Like you've already passed that. Plus oysters, There's yeah. like this relatable place that you guys have come to instead of just yeah. like how you've been, how's the family good? Whereas that's just that's a fair point. Yeah, but that's just a foundation to build onto this conversation. So you're not just gonna jump straight into a deep story. Are you? Okay. No, I'm saying it's just like uh, yes. like when you're saying it, when you're telling the story is a lot different to when you're reading, isn't it? Um, so I thought it was interesting to hear from that that side. Um, and then as I was reading the book, like there was a whole load of points that he was saying that was very interesting. Mm -hmm. Like he has this thing called homework for life. Yeah which um, basically every day he writes, you know, like a sentence or like something which has happened um, basically in in his like day, um, whatever it is, you just write it down. And then- Memorable moments. Yeah, yeah, memorable moments. And then from like those moments, he's able to like develop them into like actual stories mm -hmm. by basically following like some steps that he gives mm. um and one of the the steps that i liked was the five second moment you know, basically um sort of like give the example which he gave um is that <coughs> you know like if you look at jurassic park mm. the movie like i personally haven't seen it, it? what none of them hmm? no nah. none of them God damn. Yeah, just, I'm convinced, you know, sometimes I just think so you I never had a TV in the yard. Yeah. <laughs> no, no, no. no. <laughs> I know he has me. God <laughs> damn. I'm nah, just I'm watching Michael Jackson tutorials. And <laughs> 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 well, um, anyways, uh, yeah, I haven't seen the movie, but when he was talking about how the five second moment of that movie being that there's this guy who doesn't really like children and then what happens is at the end of the movie yeah. the guy basically like likes children and the concept is that he has like, he's with like this girl who mm. wants children but he doesn't want nothing to do with children in it, and that's like children. causing friction in it and then he gets stuck with like two kids mm. and they have to like hide from dinosaurs and whatnot um, and then allegedly, since you haven't watched Jurassic allegedly, you know, you <laughs> could never have been know. lying in it. Could have been, could have been anything. <laughs> could be storytelling, yeah, but apparently there's dinosaurs in it. So, <laughs> and then um, basically, I don't know if it's towards the end of the movie, yeah. but there's a part <laughs> in the movie Titanic. where he basically has the two kids, and then like the kids make him laugh, and then basically he realizes that like kids ain't so bad, um, and like that's basically the five second moment that transitional period from him not liking children to like uh, accepting point. yeah the turning point um, you know the same thing with the example he gave of Indiana Jones how he's like the scientist guy that doesn't like believe in God and stuff like that and then towards the end like he has that spiritual moment um, so like him basically saying that it's those parts there that people like relate to and people can connect to mm -hmm. because obviously not everyone's going to be chased by dinosaurs in it yeah. and not everyone's going to be um like looking through tombstones and all that stuff but people can relate to like finding so finding god just now or like finding um I'm trying to ruin my dreams man huh I'm trying to ruin my dream shocks listen mate, if you want to do it then go ahead yeah mate. Mm -hmm. i'm here to support you <laughs> but um yeah so That's it's basically mm -hmm. the the turning points that we all relate to and then everything else is just like adds to it mm. which i thought really interesting mm. anything you found interesting i mean <coughs> some of the points that you did give Will some you, of the you take any of those and use them in real life <laughs> to be honest um a lot of it i guess with storytelling a lot of the times you just need to throw yourself in there i guess if if it's a case where you're you're a comedian or you're someone that makes money off this like you live for this kind of stuff like mm. performing and telling your stories in front of people your your TED talks and stuff if you do that kind of thing mm. then I guess some of the steps <coughs> they did give would be useful for you but if you're someone that's casual casual person and 
you tell stories, people tell you, oh, that's a good story every now and then, then I guess you can go off of telling more stories, you get me? And finding your own sort of like, Trailing, yeah. yeah, your own source, your own twang, you get me? With, in terms of telling stories. I don't feel necessarily you will need to go to all of these workshops, reading all these magical books, and that will make your ability at telling good stories any mm. better, you get me? Mm. But that's where I stand. Overall, I'd say, in terms of my, I, I feel for that. It was, a, it was a very, very interesting book. I did enjoy it. Yeah, it was definitely worth a read.